As a World War II immigrant, my father came to this country with a dream. A dream to one day start his own business. After 20 years of working at different auto body shops, dad felt it was time. It was time for him to go on his own. So he bought this 8,000 pound Chief Easy Liner frame machine. Not because he was my father, but my dad was really good at what he did. In fact, other body shops were calling him, asking him to hit, fix some of their worst hit vehicles. And yet, my father had to turn them down. Why? Because he needed this stationary machine. That is until my father invented a special hitch that allowed him to move the machine from job site to job site, allowing him to not only book more revenue, but to do what he felt was his number one responsibility, provide for his family. My father taught me the fundamentals of what it means to be an entrepreneur. At the heart, it's about passion and drive. It's about the ability to seize an opportunity and take those strategic, calculated risk. For my father, there were many risks along his entrepreneurial path, but there are two in particular I'd like to share. The first is he had to convince my wonderful mother that it was time for them to go on their own and to leave a steady paycheck? Okay, for all of us who are married in the room, I bet you we could appreciate that conversation. The second though, my mother saw my father's vision and passion. So together they embarked on that second risk and they invested their entire family savings to buy that machine. Their hard work and passion paid off for our family. But for me in particular, it meant that I, the youngest of five children, would be the first to graduate from college. And thanks to my parents, I graduated with no debt. Since then, <laughs> since then, for the past 20 years, I have been focused on my love for entrepreneurship and my passion to revitalize communities. I have had the privilege and honor of working on some of the most complex economic development problems and opportunities with communities on behalf of government. But I continue to go back to my father's entrepreneurial journey and wonder, what if government behaved more entrepreneurial, just like my dad? I believe that it is time to do things a new way a new way to solve problems and to address those challenges. And that's the entrepreneurial way in which government will seize opportunities, taking strategic risks, working alongside an empowered community to build that dynamic quality of place, one in which we all want to live, work, and raise our families. You may be thinking, this comes easy but it truly doesn't. It requires the commitment of the community. Let's go to the city of San Jose, California. San Jose is located in the heart of the Silicon Valley. It is surrounded by startups and steeped in entrepreneurs. Highly influenced by this private sector, the government in 2008 created the Demonstration Partnership Program. The idea of the program was to allow City of San Jose employees to work alongside local technology companies to test some of their first to market products. In essence, the city would serve as the beta or the pilot for the entrepreneur using city owned assets such as police stations and fire stations and even data. For the entrepreneur, this meant credibility and validity because now they had tested their product with a government entity. But for the government, it gave them access to some of the most cutting edge technologies. Hence, the government has tested electric vehicle charging stations and air quality control systems, finding ways to be relevant to the entrepreneur and also to its residents. In fact, today, the city is demonstrating this smart pole. 
So instead of adding more fig trees to their city, they're going to consolidate data service providers in one pool, not only increasing the data coverage, but ultimately the resiliency of the network. This is no trivial matter for a city, a city whose actions impact the well-being of its residents. Hence, the city recognized that this was not risk-free, but found ways to mitigate those risks. And in the spirit and ethos of what it means to be an entrepreneur, allowed for iteration, learning from, and then trying it again, all in search of those technologies that could better the lives of everyday residents. Does this come easy? No. But let's go to the city of Boston the Bo city of Boston Seaport District. Today, the Seaport District is a vibrant part of town, but in 2003, the story was very different. This was one of the most neglected parts of South Boston. There are many reasons why the city of, of South Boston had this high percentage of underdeveloped land, but one of the main ones was the I-93, which literally cut the seaport district off from the rest of the city. The fate of the seaport district began to change in 2004 with three very important events. The first, that big dig, was finally complete, and that section of the I-93 was buried. The city decided to expand its light rail into the seaport district. And third, they opened the convention and exhibition center. These projects took many years and had many naysayers along its path. But for the seaport district, it meant a new connected life. These projects did address the infrastructure needs of the district, but it did not allow the district to reach its full momentum. So just like in entrepreneurship, where at times those initial actions and risks are not enough to reach the end goal, in this new system of an entrepreneur government, government will build on the successes achieved, continue to invest, and persevere forward until the end goal is finally met. So in 2010, the mayor tried something new. He created the Seaport Innovation District. The idea was to create a place, a place for entrepreneurs to gather, to innovate and to create. This in turn attracted Startup Accelerator Mass Challenge. It was Mass Challenge's ability to serve as that magnet for more entrepreneurs and startup that really provided the critical mass and the momentum needed to finally turn that Seaport District around. The first time government invested, they focused on the physical infrastructure. They removed the barriers. The second, they sparked a quality of place. There is no question that the Seaport District is a vibrant part of town, having attracted over 5,000 jobs and hosted over 200 new startups. I am not saying that this new style of an entrepreneur government can only happen in technology hubs. I believe it can happen elsewhere. I believe it can happen right here in the city of Atlanta. Atlanta is truly at an inflection point. On the one hand, it has the 10th largest economy in the nation. It has attracted over 40,000 new residents within just the last five years. It is the third largest concentration of Fortune 500s, and it has an unemployment rate of 5%. That is some of the lowest levels we've seen in nearly a decade. Now, we've all seen those cranes flying from Buckhead to Midtown to Downtown, and yet there continues to be a part of our community that is impoverished. And I am not talking about a part of town that is in the hinterlands. I am talking about a location that is just a three-mile walk from downtown, right into the west side. In this west side community, you will find that 60% of all parcels are either vacant or abandoned. 50% of residents live in poverty. 50%. 
That means that a family of four earns but $24,000 a year. And one out of four residents is unemployed. So when that $1.5 billion stadium was announced, it was recognized that this could serve as that catalytic investment, not only for the city, but for its neighboring community of the West Side. Just like in entrepreneurship, where at times you need to partner to augment and supplement your ability to reach that end goal, so too will this new system of an entrepreneur government, where government will serve as that connective tissue, sparking these partnerships to support job programs, social and health programs, and overall community development efforts to revitalizing a community. Hence, the city of Atlanta did not go at this on their own. They're bringing together their partners, community, nonprofit, and for-profit, all standing side by side to create that shared vision for a revitalized West Side. Some initial, some initial efforts are promising and are demonstrating that this shared vision for a revitalized, diversified economy is possible and, in fact, is starting to happen. Government and for-profit have come together, and they purchased one of those vacant parcels of property and have built a state-of-the-art workforce training facility. Nonprofits have come along and are providing the training and the certification programs so that community can upskill themselves and prepare themselves for that higher wage job. Ultimately, and more importantly, so that they can improve their quality of life. Under this new system of an entrepreneur government, partners will do what they do best, with government serving as that connective tissue, linking these efforts together in a coordinated fashion. The West Side Story, it's not complete but I believe it has the passion and the partners to walk down that arduous path and build a vibrant future for the West Side. This community story, however, it's not unique. There are many such communities like this throughout the nation, and they all deserve a new system of government, an entrepreneur government that will seize opportunities, take those strategic calculated risks, building on successes achieved, continuing to invest and persevere forward. Because when government moves forward with grit and passion that's inherent in entrepreneurs like my dad, it has the opportunity to serve as that catalyst to revitalize neighborhoods, changing communities and families in profound ways. The time for this new system of government is now. All we have to do is jump in and embrace it together. Thank you.